Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, video you're, you're watching. Uh, we appreciate your uh, your interest in this. We are excited about our our topic: uh, new truths about self service, uh, enabling conversational intelligence. Um, I'm Derek Top. I'm research director with Opus Research, and we're here with uh, with Sestec uh, to talk about how uh, we can meet the needs of customers uh, to improve efficiencies and uh, improve the customer ex experience. Um, I, I, I'm, I just are, just introduce our, our speakers here. I'm, I'm Derek Top, the research director. Um, in addition, we have a, a Dan Miller and Professor Le Levant Arslan. Uh, in fact, we're here on video as well. So, hello. Hi, <laughs> so, uh, Hi everybody. Um, so yeah, Dan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first? Sure. So I'm Dan. I'm, I'm lead analyst here at Opus. I'm very excited about this particular uh, video. We've been covering what we call conversational commerce, but specifically intelligent assistance, intelligent authentication, and, and how they combine with you know, advanced analytics to provide a better customer experience and also to promote employee efficiency. And um, it's just, Sestech is, is one of the companies that we've followed for a very long time. And as you'll learn, and we'll get into the agenda, um, that they, um, have, they cover all those bases. So I'm very excited. I want to introduce Levant. Levant, you want to say hello? Uh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Levant Arsan, and I'm founder of Sestech. Uh, also, I'm uh, teaching at Boaz University at the same time. Uh, nice to meet you. Great. Well, we have a lot to talk about, so we'll, I'll just get right into it. Um, today, we'll, we'll run, run through, you know, how businesses are addressing new challenges around customer care and, and really um, centrally around uh, in self-service and automation. Uh, we will we'll run through what we call conversational service automation, a, um, a, 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 a topic and a, a, a domain that we think is really important to the, to the future of, of customer service and customer care. Uh, we'll go through... Uh, Sestech has, has uh, coined the, the three A's, as, as we call them, automate, authenticate, and analyze. Really, each of, the, each of these are important ways to address the needs of customers uh, and really provide that personalized, secure customer experience, um, and, and then using AI-powered uh, solutions to, to improve those efficiencies and really create that, that better CX. Um, and then we'll go through some interesting, really real-world uh, case studies uh, that, that Sestech has provided around each of these uh, the, each of these topics around automate, authenticate, and analyze, and really get into the details of this actually can save money uh, and and meet both top line and bottom line needs for your businesses. Uh, and then we'll run through some of the the key takeaways that we've learned from from this. So um, I'll pass it over to, to Dan to, to start sure. it off to learn a little bit about our, our challenges. Right. And right. So so we're mm -hmm. getting to the key takeaways early. So this, <laughs> this is the classic. Um, we're going to tell you what we're going to tell you, <laughs> then we tell you, and, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll march away with that. But what's really important to look at is that technology needs right now to meet the needs of customers across every channel. And that means uh, offering consistent response, taking uh, accurate actions um, at scale. But it, Increasingly, to, to justify the expense, uh, what we're seeing and what we'll march through here is that is to understand that we're really increasing automation, and that used to equate with, hey, we're we're keeping people away from talking to live agents, but and and that has always sort of been a gripe and and sort of a. a, a a negative factor when you look at customer experience. But what we've been learning lately and what you'll see in the case studies here is that it's very possible to increase automation without compromising customer experience. We're also seeing expenditures happen uh, just broadly under the, the umbrella of digital transformation. Um, it's, it's a reaction to a, a, a true changes in customer behavior and how they reach out to the companies that they want to carry out business with. So, you know, how technologies support the migration of, the, of, of, of enterprises, of brands, um, customers to these, you know, to chat, to mobile is, is very, very important. Um, and, and the third factor is if you're going to automate, you really want to do it with the most uh, relevant uh, conversational data that is available to support those conversations. So that means, you know, that we're talking about leveraging conversational service automation across channels 
uh, incorporating authentication, as we'll learn here, which means it, it's, it's part and parcel of recogni rapidly recognizing who the customer is, and then um, capture and analyze the conversation data, and, and that improves, and, and then apply it in ways that can either manifest on the agent screen with suggestions of next best action, or, and, and, in, and in turn, improves customer experience, which gets us to sort of the, the brilliance of, um, the, of Sestex encapsulating this into the three A's, automate, authenticate, and analyze. And at this point, I think we can go to video. <laughs> that was enough slide where, uh, but Lamont, you know, um, maybe, you know, take the three A's one at a time, you know, starting with automation. Yes, for automation, basically, especially during the COVID case, I mean, uh, the branches of banks or uh, other face-to-face -face communication was limited. And we understood the importance of digitalization and self-service even more uh, during that phase. Um, and here, basically, chatbots or voice-enabled IVR systems or mobile assistants, all of those uh, self-service channels uh, provided a huge relief uh, for the companies that have already invested in those uh, areas. Yeah. And the ones that uh, haven't started this process uh, basically struggled a lot during this phase. And then the second A being authentication, um, you know, auto automation seems to be the big, the big factor that companies are thinking about. And they've invested in the past um, to, to the discussion before, and sometimes to the decrement of customer experience. Um, the, the, you know, I'd, I'd like your perspective, sort of the next step is to sort of overlay authentication into or overlay or incorporate that uh, into the automation efforts what you know <laughs> what do you see developing there or you know the, the why is yes during any contact center interaction uh, where the customer and the company is interacting you need one of the key factors is to authenticate uh, who the company is talking to Mm -hmm. Is he or she the real, really the first person uh, they are claiming uh, to be? Uh, so, and you want to me make some transactions, you want to give some information about customer account. So, you need to know the person whether you are dealing with, with the right person. And previously, there were some active uh, voice authentication implementations where we were forced to utter. Uh, Password, like my voice is my password at, at my bank or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that was not uh, very user-friendly, actually. The user experience with that was not great. And later on, uh, nowadays, I mean, we can uh, use text-independent voice biometrics technology. Uh, and the technology has advanced a lot. And with even shorter durations, uh, we can authenticate uh, the person easily uh, so seamlessly during yeah. either you are when you are talking uh, to the machine or while you are speaking with an agent uh, in the background uh, your voice can be authenticated yeah and and our terminology for that of, of, the, of the seamless continuous conversational authentication you know uh, authentication within the conversation we call it intelligent authentication or IAuth, yes. and you know it, it's been see that very evolution that you're talking about is that incorporating authentication into the conversation between an IVR or or with an agent um, it, it's made a big difference in terms of the adoption by a number of brands. And then the third A, which is analyze, <laughs> um, you know, speak to that because that, you know, just as authentication has sort of moved to the background and been continuous, um, there, it seems like, you know, capturing what we call conversational data is, is important and it's something else that's happening in, in a call or in a conversation. Um, in analytics, basically, you uh, can analyze the whole customer journey, starting from maybe self-service, 
then you are connected to an agent maybe uh, and this whole experience uh, has to be analyzed uh, and for that we have speech and text analytics uh, but you have to also include previous history information of the customer and uh, have a business uh, intelligence uh, and there you need some AI technology uh, with all the information that you get from self-service channels. You can also add authentication on top of it uh, if you are, for example, uh, working on a fraud case. For example, the, the fraud cases have also increased a lot uh, during COVID. And uh, for that, basically, in the analysis phase, uh, you need an orchestration unit uh, to com combine all this information uh, and take decisions accordingly. Yeah. 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 And I, I think we, I mean, we, we, we've seen this in, in our kind of recent research and surveys uh, that underscores all of the, the trends that you just mentioned as far as, uh, you know, well, the importance of authentication, automation, uh, and increase in fraud uh, and, and leveraging conversational data. Uh, we'll just, I, I want to present a, a couple different data points here, and, and, and Dan will run through them as well. But uh, just to, like I said, just to highlight what we're seeing in the market when it comes to automate, for example, this was a recent survey that we did uh, um, that was, I was focused, on, focused on, on voice assistance, but really intelligent assistance and how you know, bots can help uh, brands and enterprises. We asked, asked decision makers uh, you know, their interest in, in, the, um, in, the, in using uh, intelligent assistance and what, it, what, it, you know, what kind of value it would drive to the organization. I'll, I'll just highlight the, the, the first two dark blue ones because there's a lot here and we don't need to go through it. But um, the, the first two main value drivers are convenience and speed, uh, and then improving customer support. So the, the idea here, again, uh, that really elevates the, the, the importance of having a self-service or some kind of intelligent assistant uh, to, to really kind of drive value within organizations. And, um, and, and you know, I think we're, we're seeing every organization implement some level of, of uh, intelligent assistance. Um, and then, uh, Dan, do you want to go through the, the next one on, on looking at authentication? Sure. <laughs> and, and, you know, we fielded these surveys almost simultaneously. So one, right. one had to do with, with sort of intelligent assistance, but in parallel, uh, we, were we were asking about authentication and you know, what the drivers were, especially in the post-COVID era, and um, that some of the drivers for investment were basically around picking up the agents in the, in the formal you know, brick and mortar contact centers and having them work from home gave rise to some new demands for authentication, both of the uh, customer, of course, as, as Levant said, you know, having high certainty that the person calling is whom he or she claimed to be. Uh, but this introduced a new area where you authenticate the agents as well. And this notion of doing continuous authentication using voice biometrics and, and other forms of biometrics and other authentication factors has become you know, more important and there are uh, demand drivers around work from home agents. Another thing that, that we became aware of in, in this move uh, to, fall, you know, to provide services across multiple channels is that you know fraud was increasing across messaging apps such as WhatsApp, mm -hmm. uh, less so in the IVR. And what was interesting is that um, the contact center itself wasn't as important as, as these new emerging channels, and that gets very, very interesting. Great. And then... Um... And thinking on the the last A around analyze, we also uh, had a had a survey in the field here um, asking decision makers around uh, their using of of automatic speech recognition, um, ASR technologies, and speech analytics. Uh, and we we asked them in, in this particular uh, two two data points here, um, eighty percent of of the respondents were were actively using ASR in terms of you know kind of transcribing data and and, and leveraging what we call you know conversational intelligence. Uh, but but only uh, but two thirds of them were were not fully utilizing uh, that that data those those speech analytics and so uh, and then the, just the the bottom point here 
is that 85% uh, recognize the importance of speech recognition. And, and, and again, like this is directly, we're, we're tying this directly to uh, conversational intelligence and, and, and analytics uh, and, and really, you know, using that data to, to um, uh, provide, you know, business insights uh, and, and uh, just to bring us back on video here, uh, mm -hmm. you know, utilizing the business intelligence and, and AI, uh, as, as Levon uh, mentioned. So um, there, you know, here, here we see real, real world, um, you know, from from the market, uh, a need for for these these three types of of um, of you know of the of the three A's. So, um, and and I think more importantly, or as importantly, is some coordination among the three. You know, sort of a solution. What we've detected is sort of gaps between what people are implementing and what they feel they should be doing, <laughs> and the way that all these technologies come together. And you know, I think Levon had some interesting points to make in our, in our prep about, and, and actually earlier on when he was talking about orchestration, is, is that, hey, what, what's the missing you know, magic uh, uh, stuff? <laughs> it's not magic, but they always say the, the best technologies are indistinguishable from magic, but you know, sort of bringing in <laughs> the, the toolkit to um, help them out. What do you think? Yes, I think here, I mean, uh, orchestration is uh, the key to connect all this automate, um, analyze, and uh, authenticate uh, process. Uh, you need to tie in with the uh, corporate uh, third-party services as well. I mean, uh, yeah. these Absolutely. technologies. Uh, and how you implement it in the organization, for example, for each channel, uh, for each separate channel, if you do a separate integration with the company for different vendors, from different vendors, for example, if you get authentication from another party, uh, orchestration from another uh, party, or uh, automation for different channels from different vendors, then it becomes a mess for the company of mm. the department. Uh, mm. Then you, they need to do the integrations with each of those uh, platforms separately. Mm -hmm. So uh, we as uh, SESTEC, uh, we are trying to address this whole conversational intelligence uh, in one uh, orchestration unit mm -hmm. uh, where you can uh, leverage all the technologies from all the technologies and get the benefits uh, with very little effort actually from the IT yeah. Yeah. And what what super and, and we hinted at it in the in the previous slide is this is getting very tied to business results. You know, one of the things we've noticed as, you know, chatbots and whatever they want to call them, intelligent assistants, <laughs> as authentication becomes more important, um, they've moved from sort of the innovation groups or uh, proof of concepts into the critical path between companies and their customers. And that means that they are linked uh, explicitly to measured business outcomes. And, and you know, it, this is our shift over to your use cases, Levant. But, but the idea is you know, that we're seeing increased self-service rate. Uh, we're seeing justification based on average handling times, uh, increased serve, you know, increases in volumes. <laughs> um, and at the same time, the measurements of customer satisfaction uh, have been um, have, have, have increased as well. <laughs> so that's sort of a, a virtuous thing. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll put up your, you know, specific use cases now to show that we're not just saying this, <laughs> you know, our research was interviewing mm -hmm. decision makers about what their key concerns were or are. Um, but you have some real world use cases here that are worth discussing oh, that, that are specific. And also I think we can lead up with, you know, there are known knowns now <laughs> about you know what a company can expect when they employ these technologies, and, and if you could walk through um, this calculator that you have developed, but, but you know the numbers sort of speak for themselves here. So I'll turn it over to you as as narrator now. Okay, uh, thanks, Dan. And uh, here we uh, looked at the 
100 seat contact center uh, as an example. Uh, for example, uh, one minute cost, uh, one minute call cost uh, for a company is one dollars. Uh, we estimated to be roughly, and average call duration is let's say six minutes. Um, then average cost per call answered by live agents is six dollars, and uh, one million calls per year. Uh, are coming to the contact center for 100 seat contact center, let's say. Uh, if we take those numbers, uh, chatbots or uh, voice enabled IVR systems, uh, basically self service systems, automation systems, uh, can resolve 20% uh, of requests without the help of live agents. Uh, that's a 20% reduction from $6. Uh, so this is $1.2 per call. Uh, for voice biometrics authentication, if you have calls that require authentication, uh, on the average, our experience shows that uh, 30 seconds is saved in this authentication process from agent time. Uh, that that is roughly 50 cents per call. And when we look at the analytics part, there are long silence periods in the uh, customer call center conversations. And these long silence periods can be due to several factors. One of them is lack of knowledge of the call center agent about the topic that the customer is asking. Uh, and another one uh, can be, for example, uh, there can be a problem with the process. For example, the company network may be slow or mm. something like that. Uh, or there may be some other root causes. Mm. Uh, when we looked at the companies uh, that we work with, uh, we were able to get on the average 5% reduction in those silence periods. <laughs> and uh, that was roughly 30 cents per call, actually. And that also increased customer satisfaction because they had to wait less uh, on the phone. Okay. Yeah, and, and in our experience, um, that's just the beginning. So those are sort of the hard cost savings based on sort of improved efficiencies, but when you look at the application of analytics, you know, to support accurate routing to the right agent who knows the stuff, um, that, that led, to, well, that leads to sort of the, the reduction in silence and, and faster handling of, of problems. Um, if you look at um, other instances where the, the speech analytics is applied um, it, it can even be sort of predictive to, you know, what the purpose of the call is. And when, <laughs> once there's a matching of purpose to personnel or purpose to application, um, that's where we're seeing, you know, tremendous efficiencies. But it's neat on your calculator <laughs> to see it sort of starts with this, you know, assumption of a 20% uh, automation rate because, you know, everybody's mileage may vary. And it's neat that you made it into a calculator because people can put their own assumptions, their own experience in there. And, and, um, and these things don't sell themselves, <laughs> but, you know, the, the, uh, the savings and the return on investment can, can be plugged into operations. But I'll tell you what else was, was really interesting is, is, you know, going through your actual use cases and um, let, you know, let's jump right into that. Uh, uh, I'd never heard of uh, Kuwait Bank and I'm probably mispronouncing it, Kuwait Turk. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, mm -hmm. to hear this story, um, you know, it is of, an, you know, an example of where your, you know, I, I assume it goes into how your calculations were made, but um, yeah, could, could you talk a little bit about it? Yes, uh, Kuwait Turk is one of the largest participation banks in Turkey. Uh, participation bank is like an investment bank, but it operates like a normal bank. I mean, doing financial transactions and everything. Uh, it 
operates with 435 branches in Turkey and it has 200 agents in its cost contact center. Uh, Kuwait Turk wanted to apply digital transformation uh, before COVID began actually and they uh, aim to implement uh, digital assistant technology uh, to provide faster and more efficient services. Um, and we created together with them a virtual banking assistant named Selim. It was developed to help customers with their questions and make financial calculations and direct them to the right menus of digital channels uh, without the need of live agents. Uh, here, uh, we also fine-tuned our speech recognizer based on the Kuwait Turk domain call center jargon. And we re obtained 97% uh, speech recognition accuracy. Uh, it's very high actually. And uh, 5.6 million customers uh, were answered within one year uh, without the intervention of any agents. So it was a a huge success uh, story for them yeah. and uh, they benefited uh, very much and less than a year in less than a year uh, they got their return on investment basically yeah. that's tremendous because we do get a lot of questions in financial services about mm -hmm. how much um, you know a, a chatbot is is able to do or an intelligent virtual agent and that that's a really good start um, in the interest of time, we'll, we'll move on to, to ING as well. Um, to you know, you know, this is this is another story about um, you know improving authentication and, and the direct financial benefit of that. Uh, in uh, ING, uh, ING Turkey is a subsidiary of ING Group, and it has more than five hundred agents. Uh, their problem was. Uh, they had authentication process very long. Uh, it was 45 to 60 seconds on average. Uh, and they had low customer satisfaction rates based on their uh, long authentication process, basically, <laughs> due over the call. Uh, and using our passive voice authentication technology, uh, ING managed to save significant time in the calls, uh, that is, their uh, numbers were, uh, they dropped down to 15 to 30 seconds uh, per call, uh, on each call, uh, for the authentication process. So this, on the average, a 30 seconds saving uh, for them. Yeah, and the other benefit we hear in, in this is, a lot of companies are are hearing from their own agents, and you know, in, in the case of banks, they don't always think of themselves as agents as much as advisors. And one of the last things they want to do is authenticate. So to sort of take that out of their hands, uh, or, you know, make it, you know, not their responsibility, but the system responsibility, is, has led to greater agent satisfaction. So that's been interesting as well. So savings and better morale. And that's exactly. on the authentication. So the first one was automation. The next one was authentication. And here I think we have a story of, of, um, of, of you know, analytics and how it's being applied. So let, let's hear a little bit about Web Help. Yes, Web Help Turkey is a subsidiary of uh, Web Help Global. Uh, in Turkey, they have 7,500 call center agents. Um, and they needed to monitor and evaluate calls and they wanted to have continuous quality management. Uh, normally, they can only uh, evaluate 3 to 5% of all the calls manually. Uh, with using speech analytics, they were able to uh, analyze 100% of the calls in the call center, and they were able to uh, find some root causes of problems in their call center. And in terms of agent uh, satisfaction, agent uh, quality, basically, uh, the score of agents increased by 7%, absolute. Hmm. Uh, 
uh, when compared to the previous scores that they were getting on the same uh, measures. Uh, and agent interruption rates decreased by 86%. So basically, uh, in our system, we are calculating the number of interrupts that an agent does uh, per minute. And uh, we report to the agents, basically, uh, how many interruptions that they are making. Uh, so when they see their uh, numbers uh, done objectively by a machine, uh, it's to change uh, the behavior, basically. And uh, that resulted in significant customer satisfaction also. Right. And, and that's a classic, you know, application of analytics uh, for agent remediation, you know, for the, for the, you know, training and, you know, improvement of agent efficiency. So there's, you know, so we have one of each. And in this next um, use case, and I'll mispronounce this again, <laughs> Bakif Bank, um, this, this we call the trifecta, I think. So <laughs> if you could walk us through this, I, I think this is core to that story of, of orchestration and coordination and the value of combining the three A's. Yes, uh, we have the orchestration uh, recently announced. So, I mean, this is a new project and we already did the automation part and Vakuf Bank is uh, saving a lot from the automation part. They both have mobile uh, web chat and also uh, IVR systems, speech enabled IVR. And they are uh, having 445,000 transactions uh, over those uh, self service channels per day. Uh, so it's a huge savings for them already. Uh, and uh, we started with them the authentication and analytics. Uh, parts uh, now and by the end of this year we are going to combine all three uh, automate authenticate and analyze and based on the analytics data we want to also feed uh, the uh, part yeah. yeah so it's a it's a virtuous circle and i think what's impressive there is you know we often hear from vendors that they're talking about land and expand and you do an application and then you prove success and you grow. This seems like, you know, the adopt, you know, moving from automate to automate and authenticate to automate, authenticate, analyze, and then back to automation. It, it yeah. sounds like it was done organically that, that, you know, this was in response to, you know, the, you know, what the wanted to do when it started may not have known it but you know now it's all sort of coming together yes mm -hmm. yeah. i think it's going to be like that i mean the whole cost customer journey when you analyze it uh, analy analytics basically helps with the satisfaction customer satisfaction and customer experience automation uh, is also uh, actually if you do a very good automation system the customer is also happy because they are not uh, waiting in line uh, for long times. I mean, like at, especially at peak hours or uh, busy days. Uh, yeah. It's also a plus for them. Uh, but automation also is a big plus for the companies because it uh, saves a huge amount of uh, cost uh, money from that for them. Right. And, and the big deal there, too, is that uh, the, your customers' customers are very oriented towards task completion. By the time, you know, they're contacting the company, they have in mind what they want to uh, do. <laughs> and, you know, with this combination of, you know, rapid identification, of anticipating what the call's about, you, you speed up the time it takes, you know, for them to actually complete the tasks that they want to do. So we're all building confidence here. Um, <laughs> Our, our key takeaways here, and I think the very top one is to treat every conversation as conversational intelligence. And I think it was with, uh, with WebHelp or ING that Levant mentioned that they're analyzing 100% of conversations. And the fact that that is now possible compared to the 3% or so that we hear people, you know, that people are able to do, 
um, that is really important. You know, by adding authentic that, um, you can associate those conversations, those findings with specific customers, with specific agents, and that becomes very important. Um, and, and, you know, a, a company that, that went the trifecta, uh, Vakif Bank, learned, you know, the, the value of combining all three of the A's um, and, and that that becomes important both operationally and it goes to the bottom line. Um, the next thing, and, and uh, I want to hear a wrap up um, by Levant here, is, is that we're promoting technical, technological synergies, which not only is a mouthful, but every time <laughs> individuals talk about synergy, um, it raises a little bit of skepticism. But I think what we're seeing in the real life implementations is that this combination of, of authentication with accurate transcription, um, and, and this is a, for instance, um, that has, has led to increased fraud prevention. So this is sort of like an unexpected outcome when, when you combine these things el elegantly. And here again, you know, the magic word is orchestration. Yeah, I, I'll just add that. I mean, there are, as you mentioned earlier, Dan, there are key gaps um, from, from a technology, technology, technology perspective within organizations uh, that are being met here when it comes to combining these three different, uh, you know, uh, methods around authentication, automation, and analyze. And, and we, we've talked about this for a while here uh, in, in terms of um, the needs of the, within organizations to really provide these, these, these uh, uh, levels of uh, customer care and, and, and self-service. But, but now, yeah, having it under, under one platform um, and or, or under an orchestration, I think really is a kind of a, a game changer for some of the organizations out there. Also, I should add, I mean, like, uh, there's a concept called augmented intelligence, and that is where AI and people are working together. Basically, AI is complementing uh, human uh, resources. Uh, call centers, contact centers uh, are a very good example of that, actually. Uh, the routine jobs, uh, basically, uh, can be taken by AI and the agents can be directed towards more complex tasks and uh, they can also be more happy about their uh, job because they are helping more uh, complex cases and they can use their skills better uh, and the machine can help them in doing that basically. Right. And, and that's a profound finding <laughs> and, and it rings true because we know when we first started covering intelligent assistants and, and it got funneled into calling them bots. Um, there was a lot of concern that the bots were there to replace humans. But we're, we're learning, as, as you put it, it's sort of like uh, there's a balancing going on. You called it, you know, augmented intelligence. Um, we've seen it framed as, you know, creating superhuman helpers <laughs> because now, now um, and, and this is where Opus sees things going, is, is that, you know, we used to get asked, you know, shouldn't, Shouldn't companies be scrupulous about identifying when you're talking to a bot versus when you're talking to a person? And the way things are evolving, you know, people might want to know that and they might want to choose when they want to finish something with a bot or, you know, transfer to an agent. But the model is more becoming that, you know, e either that this conversational intelligence either informs directly a conversation between a machine and a person or the live agent, assistant, advisor, and the customer are looking at the same information, and they're both sort of becoming more intelligent and more capable of completing what they're doing, and that's what you're making possible here. Thank you, Dan, for offering this uh, <laughs> opportunity uh, to talk about our use cases, uh, customer cases. Um, I think uh, the future is going to be very bright uh, in terms of AI technologies used in call centers, contact centers, and customer experience uh, is going to uh, improve for everyone. Exactly. And thank you. Yeah, we look forward to it. Thank you. Bye.